All right, it's time for another update of my client Vivian's cut. However, I am way behind. I was in Hawaii for almost two weeks with my family, came home from that really sick and was just feeling miserable. So I apologize for the delay. I have four weeks to give you, so let's just jump right into it. Really quick first though, some people may have missed weeks three and four, and this is because I titled the video a little bit differently and I titled it consecutive day refeeds and didn't make it very clear that it was a cutting update. So I apologize for that. If you missed it, you can go check that one out first and then come back to this one after if you wanna make sure you keep up with everything. Anyway, when we last left off, weight really hadn't been moving very much, but I talked about several different reasons why it may be elevated and that we just give it another week. And if things don't move, then we'd make some adjustments. Well, unfortunately, it turned out things really didn't move. She only lost a little over a tenth of a pound. So the real question, as I mentioned last week, was either do we take a diet break first or do we just make some adjustments down to try to get the process going right away? What I decided to do was go ahead and give her a diet break, and there was a couple reasons for this. One is that she had been dieting for five weeks, so it wasn't a bad time to implement one anyway, but the bigger reason was she was going on a four-day snowboarding trip, and I wanted to give her some extra calories. I also talked to her about some different strategies she could use to be more flexible. If she didn't want to track, I was 100% okay with that. To me, life is all about experiences and memories, and I don't feel like we should be taking vacations like this and stressing out about food, stressing out about tracking our macros, feeling like we need to restrict ourselves, and it's like, what are you going to regret more later in life? Not enjoying the trip and the experience itself, but being able to maintain your weight or fully experiencing it and creating these memories and having a good time, but maybe coming back up a couple pounds. Trust me, at the end of your life, you're not going to be worried about what happened 50 years ago at some trip that you went on where you gained two pounds. So I talked about different options and just said it was basically up to her, whatever she wants to do. There's a lot of different options for this where you can kind of stay roughly on track but still enjoy it and just be more flexible. So I told her if she wants to track her macros, she's more than welcome to do so. However, if you want to maybe track calories and protein but interchange carbs and fats however you want, that's fine. Or if you just want to track calories and not worry about macros at all, that'll kind of keep things in check. If you just want to kind of loosely track just to make sure you're not overshooting too much. Or if you just want to not track at all and just enjoy it but maybe just don't go crazy you know don't stuff your face because you're off plan that's where the real danger lies in just don't restrict eat until you're full and that creates a good balance for most so she decided to track which is fine and she did give herself the flexibility to have some more and enjoy it and not worry too much about things so her average for the week was over by about 100 calories but no big deal and truthfully and this is something that's often the case with many vacations is you're going to be more active you're just going to get a lot more expenditure than you do in everyday life especially if you have a sedentary job so oftentimes you're going to burn a lot of extra calories and in the case of a snowboarding trip that was definitely the case and she mentioned that she did a ton of it got a lot of activity and probably burned tons of calories and her weight pretty much showed this as well because although she didn't weigh herself while she was gone the three-day average was 129.7 and 129 when she got back so that average is down over two pounds from the previous week but again most likely because of all the extra expenditure now this next week is where things didn't quite go according to plan, but I feel like you need a little bit of context first. So I take one trip every year with my family where I am unavailable to my clients. I do travel quite a bit in years time, both with my family and without them, but I always work through all my travels. But I feel like I owe my family that one trip where I just give them my undivided attention and not worry about work and other things. And this trip to Hawaii that we just did where we were gone for 10 days was the trip where I was unavailable. Truthfully, this always makes me feel a little bit bad and a little bit guilty with my clients, but my family deserves this from me, and I do give my clients the option to get a refund for that time that I am unavailable. Anyway, knowing I would be unavailable, I did set her up as well as all my clients with two weeks while I was gonna be gone. And in this case, I gave Vivian a couple different options depending on how things went, but in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have gave that option. Basically, what I did was I gave her macros to return to dieting if she wanted, or she could continue the diet break if things went well, and basically, said if you lose a lot of weight during your break or if you're just really feeling the effects of dieting and feeling really worn out you should take a second week of diet break and not come back to the dieting well she came back from her trip and decided to go ahead and jump back into the dieting but also mentioned in her next check-in that she probably should have taken another week of diet break because she was still feeling really tired from her trip Plus, quite frankly, because of the big drop on the scale and the fact that she was getting all that extra expenditure on her trip, it's kind of like she didn't really even take a diet break. Like, yes, she got some extra calories, but with all that extra expenditure, she was still in a big deficit, as could be seen by the big drop in the scale. So technically, you could argue that her body didn't really get any kind of break. 
Anyway, the adjustments we made for week 7 was to drop her carbs by an average of 58 and her fat by an average of 9, which is a 141 calorie drop, plus we increased her cardio by 25 from her pre-diet break numbers. Now the reason for this is one of the strategies that I really love to make when in a fat loss phase is to give the diet break and then make the adjustments after that, but I'll probably talk about that more in the next update and I may actually make a separate video about this altogether, so I'll hold off on giving more detail now. Anyway, she unfortunately didn't see a drop on the scale this week, and in fact saw an increase on the scale of about a quarter of a pound on average, but then again it's hard to say how accurate that week before was with all the missed data. Not only that, but she mentioned that she strained her back pretty bad, and anytime you're dealing with any kind of injury, you're going to have extra inflammation, and anytime you have extra inflammation, you're going to see a spike on the scale. That said, by the time her check-in actually came around, she mentioned that she was feeling much better, but I was basically left with a choice here. Do I either give her a diet break, since she essentially didn't get one before and we're not seeing much weight loss, or leave things the same because we've only been on these macros for one week now and just give it some time to see what happens. So I decided I didn't want to give her a break after just one week, and let's just give it one more week to see what happens in week eight and also see how she's feeling by the end of that week. And once again, unfortunately not much movement, only a quarter of a pound down from the week before. So even though she mentioned she was feeling fine and not overly hungry or anything, I decided it was time to go ahead and give her that diet break, and I would like to try to do it for at least two weeks if we can. Mostly because it's been eight weeks now, and she pretty much technically hasn't gotten one yet. So I gave her 135 protein, 260 carbs, and 60 fat for the week, which is an increase of 220 calories while dropping cardio from 100 minutes to 60 minutes. Then whenever the diet break's done, what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll make another adjustment down. And I want to do this because her calories are still in a pretty good place. She's still eating around 1,900 calories, which for her body weight is still almost 15 times her body weight. And quite frankly, most people end their reverse diet there if they're lucky, so she's still in a great place. Plus, we need to consider when she was in the earlier stages of her reverse, she was still on like 1,700 calories, and she'd actually reverse for a little bit by herself before coming to me, so sometimes you just have to get down to that threshold again to really get things moving. And that's not to say that things haven't moved at all. She's still lost 6 pounds in 8 weeks, so it's not like it's nothing, but there just hasn't been much movement the last few weeks, not only in weight, but also pictures and measurements, so I just feel like it's time to make some changes. And this is a good thing to always keep in mind. I know that flat totals can be really frustrating. They, they can be, for sure. But you also have to understand that it's just part of the process, and it's something that's pretty much unavoidable. So we just have to adjust and move forward and not let our emotions get the best of us and end up doing something that's going to set us back or something that's not in our best interest just because you're frustrated. And I'm pretty dang confident that after we get through this next little phase and go through the diet break and then make some adjustments, things are going to move pretty well for her. And honestly, I actually wouldn't be that surprised if we see some movement during the diet break itself, but we shall see. Now do this next. To find out more about how to lose fat without losing muscle, make sure you check out this top video, and I'll take you through everything you need to consider to make sure you keep your gains while losing that fat. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.